Hey. Hi. How's it going? Good. So happy I could join. Me too. They sent me a step by step on how to do it. I was like, okay, I got it. <laughs> yes, yes. I know. There's all these like things to talk about. Yes. No, I mean, the step by step how to go live. I'm like, oh, oh. yes. Yes, I know. There's always possibilities for like things to happen and not go right. So right, yes. I yeah. wanted to make sure that that didn't happen. Yes. So you're? Are you in California? We we are in Lake Tahoe under five feet of snow right now, oh and my we're God. supposed to get another four feet in the next three days. So we're gonna be under a lot of snow. Wow! Oh wow! Didn't really Where are you now? I'm in New Orleans. Oh, cool. Yeah. Not so it's usually, there. What's that? There's not snow there. Not really. And it's usually pretty warm. But today it was like 47, which is kind of odd. It's, um, it's getting cold pretty much everywhere, it seems like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us. It's awesome to have you. I've been following you for a long time. So I'm glad we were able to connect. Oh, my gosh. I, am, I feel honored. I'm a huge fan of Peace Out. Thank you. And all the products. Yeah. So if you just want to do an intro yourself and then I talk, you know, talk a little bit. Yeah. Long. Okay. Yes. So my name is Mamina Terregano and I'm a board certified dermatologist. I'm actually also board certified in internal medicine and dermatopathology, but I practice mostly as a dermatologist in the New Orleans area. I also practice part time as a dermatopathologist. So that means I sit at a microscope, which is this little microscope right here. And I look at skin biopsies. So people have like concerning moles or skin cancer. I'll look at those um, under the microscope and diagnose that. Um, but yes, and I'm also very active on social media, both on Instagram and TikTok. Um, and, you know, of course, love to share, you know, education on skincare and skin health. And I'm also interested in like a more holistic approach to health. So in addition to skincare, talking about other things like nutrition and overall health and well-being. That sounds super exciting. <laughs> well, I'm glad we're, we're talking about age defined today, which is yes. like one of your one of your many expertise. Um, so I'm the founder and CEO of Peace of Skincare. Uh, my name is Enrico, if anybody doesn't know me. Um, and we're today to talk about retinal face stick and with a portion of a little bit of retinal eye stick as well. Uh, so that's retinal face stick, eye stick, cute pinky. Um, and the reason why I developed the face stick, it's really, um, we started with eye stick, which we saw a huge success. It was really because I couldn't find an underwrite retinal products that was able to deliver the results, but without any irritation or redness, that I always get peeling eyelids or redness under eyes. Um, and I wanted to develop something that was really not irritating, but really effective. And at the same time, really easy to apply, which that's why I was like, how oh, the tapping thing, it's kind of a pain. Can I just have something I can swipe like a lip balm? So that's how the concept came about. And also a cool part about the eye stick and face stick, which I'll get into, is that they're both made with water-free and air-free. So it helps to really keep this, the encapsulated retina even more stable. Uh, so that's what's something really exciting. It's made uh, from 65% quality. So it's, it's a really hydrating aspect of the base formula. It's hydrating, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and from the success of retinal eye stick, I was like, okay, but I also need that for the rest of my face, but really like max it out on the retinal percentages. And that's why we have 3% encapsulated retinol in this face stick formula to really address um, age defying benefits from wrinkles and fine lines and overall texture of the skin. Um, and from, from launching face stick, we've really been seeing like amazing results in the BNA and consumer study and people are really loving it, the easiness of it. And that's why we have people that range from their early 20s, which that's about when I started retinol. But when I had prescription retinol, I was always red. And like my mom was like, are you drinking a lot or something? Like, are you too much on the sun? You wear an SPF. I'm like, no, I'm not. I wear SPF like every two hours. It's 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 the, it's the rat, you know. It's like it's, she goes. I don't think that's good for you. You're not supposed to be that yeah. right. Um, yeah. That's a common issue that I do see. Right, like mm -hmm. peeling, redness, then it's purging, mm -hmm. like yeah. for the first three weeks, and then you get used to it, and then if you stop for a couple of days, you like go back to square one. Yeah. Um, 
So mm -hmm. we, we really wanted to avoid all of those down uh, side effects with, with the face stick. So we haven't seen, we actually run our, our IPT, which is the consumer safety study, and there was out of 150 people that run it, there was zero irritation, like not even level one. So yeah. it, was, it was really awesome to like see with that high strength retinal products to not see any irritation from none of the participants. So it was great. Yeah, what I thought was funny too, oh, so when I was making the TikTok video showing off the stick, which I love, um, I literally took many takes. And so I applied like, I don't know how many layers of it on my face. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so scared of what's going to happen. But like nothing, nothing happened. That's and, you know, That's I could wash it off, but it was uh, like, if anything, the next day I was like, um, my skin looks amazing. Um, <laughs> which I was so excited about. And you know, retinols can typically, to see the true effect of retinol, especially when it comes to wrinkles, it can take a while. It can take like six to six weeks to three months, you know, we tell people. Um, but I just loved how there's these other additional ingredients that just hydrate and brighten the skin. So you can see yeah. immediate effects with it. And it's like also not irritating. So there's there's just so many positive aspects. And, yeah, no, you're totally right. That, that was. I'm kind of an impatient person. I was like, I don't really want to wait three weeks to see results. I really want something I can swipe and the next day I can see something. So I was like, mm -hmm. just give me something. I want brightening or more smooth. And that's why we decided to infuse it with a fruit enzyme blend to help explode overnight, but not too aggressively. You know, so we have a sexanthine, which is super strong antioxidant and there's a lot of benefits associated with anti-aging um, with that ingredient alone. And vitamin C. So we we you really see you know a lot of people even the beginning we run that after 24 hours people seem bright and smoother. The comment that I keep hearing is like how smooth you are the next day, mm -hmm. and then after you know the, your two weeks, three weeks, then then you really start seeing the results on uh, on your fine lines and wrinkles. Yeah, yeah, um, I know. And one of the you know people I think are in general like very overwhelmed when it comes to skincare. They're like. Right. My gosh there's like so many steps i have to like do this and i have to use this serum and i have to like use a retin a retinol i have to like moisturize and what i love about this is it's like perfect for anyone who wants to like streamline their skincare who is overwhelmed like can't figure out like what to get like this has all the things that we talk about as dermatologists so right. it doesn't have sunscreen but that's okay this is a nighttime product um, we love sunscreen, but it has all the other things that we love with anti-aging, vitamin C, you know, of course it has like this 3% encapsulated retinol, which we can talk about more about what that means. But yes, like you said, the vitamin C, other antioxidants, like Picuchiol is also a really powerful right. antioxidant. Um, and it has like, it, yeah, it's been found to have similar effects to retinol. I don't, you know, it, but it's also gentle and, and then same with the astaxanthin. And then the fact that it does have like these exfoliating properties. So exfoliants is another thing we tell people to do regularly. So antioxidants, exfoliants, retinol, and moisturization. And like you have that all in, in one product. And then my other favorite thing is, you know, I, I honestly think it's so convenient that you could just, because you don't have to like wash your hands afterwards. Like you can just, yeah. I think it's great to just keep on your nightstand actually. And That's what I do. Like, like just right before you go to bed, you know? And that's also like, convenient because, you know, given that it has like the occlusive um, ingredients in it, um, you, it's, it's great to, it's supposed to be like the final step in your routine. So it just makes it super convenient. And you don't even have to do anything else. As long as you wash your face, I'm happy. And then you can just use this product. It's, yeah, and I just, you know, the, the inclusive thing was kind of came from the cost of Aquaphor or like any of those types where you like, they're like, put your moisturizing serums and then you put Aquaphor, I'm like, I don't know if I really want that. It's great for a lot of things. I just don't want it close to my eyes and face and stuff. Uh, yeah. It's, it's a white mineral product. So I was like, oh, like this could be cool if you could just lock in all the benefits of your skin. And I think we achieved that. So that, that was an exciting part. And yeah. to talk about the encapsulated, encapsulated retinol, I'm sure you know about it, but to tap into it quickly. So it, we really picked the encapsulated retinol because it's a form of least irritating retinol since it's mm -hmm. um, given a little bit over time into the skin, mm -hmm. not all at once. And also mm -hmm. is able to penetrate deeper the regular retinol. And at the same time, it can remain stable, just like vitamin C and retinol, the very unstable ingredients. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the reason why we're air-free and water-free really helps to keep the encapsulated retinol stable 
on top of the encapsulation itself, which basically it's what protects the retinol from an encapsulation perspective to mm-hmm. remain stable throughout the time um, I could, until you use it. So a lot of times when you look at regular retinols that they're not water-free or air-free or they're exposed to um, sunlight or anything, that you can, mm-hmm. you know, you can say 1%, but by the time it reaches the consumer, it could be 0.1 because of how much it did with it over time. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, I thought that was a pretty cool, but if you have anything yeah. to add, well, And also like, three percent is pretty high for a retinol so the fact right. that it's not irritating at three percent is pretty nice too right you get like all these benefits without it being irritating um but yeah and and with the encapsulation it can the way that it doesn't irritate is that it actually can get under the skin and do its thing the, the reason why people get irritation from retinol is because it just sits on the surface of your skin and the longer it sits on the surface that's where it causes the irritation so if you can encapsulate it and like just have it easily penetrate into the skin, there's less chances for irritation. So that's definitely what yeah, um, makes sense. Benefit. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And a lot of people also <laughs> still wonder, like, people are like, what are retinols? Like, why should we use them? You know, right. what's the purpose of them? I would say, like, after sunscreen, it's like the number one most studied ingredient. Now there's, re- there's a whole retinoid family. There's, there's prescription retinoids like Retin-A or Tretinoin. And then the most popular over-the-counter retinol or retinoid is retinol, which is what this product is. Um, and both retinol and you know tretinoin have been studied extensively. Probably the number one studied anti-aging ingredient uh, yeah. when it comes to yeah fine lines, wrinkles, evening out skin tone. And so if you were to pick any number one anti-aging ingredient, as dermatologists we say, so after sunscreen we say use. Or retinol and then okay. third place would be vitamin c which is also in this product too so it's uh, a two in one yeah so it's a pretty high yield product <laughs> that's all we can ask for um yeah and in terms of uh usage so you can use the face stick um and i stick together just face stick not around the eyes eye stick is for the eyes so mm-hmm. the difference is just the the level of the, per, the retinal percentage, of course, your eyes are a lot delicate, more delicate than the rest of your face, as is 10 times thinner. So you really want um, that to be affected, but not too irritating. So that's why it's a little bit less retinol, and also we have a little bit of less bakucho. Um, mm-hmm. And on the face stick, we increase the bakucho, we increase the retinol, and we add also vitamin C. And a little bit of the astaxanthin, that's why you see the color, it's a little uh, mm-hmm. brownish, pinkish, there's not yeah. tint to it. So you don't see it on your skin, but that <laughs> comes from the astaxanthin itself. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can put face stick all over your face and then eye stick or vice versa, doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. And then you go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Don't, mm-hmm. don't yeah. wear it during the day or you burn Super yourself. I was gonna say another common question that I get a lot from people like both, whether it's my audience or my patients is like, when do I start using a retinol? So, I mean, really, People, I mean, teenagers use retinoids for acne. Now, when it comes right. to acne, I say, you know, you don't have to like stress about using it, you know, when you're a teenager. But I would say, you know, being in your 20s, that's a good age to start thinking about using a retinol. Um, and, you know, in terms of like what type of retinol to start with, I always recommend start as gentle and just work your way up. So I also think this is a great like beginner retinol because it's, to- you know, tolerated by most skin types. When it comes to like prescription retinoids, um, you have to be more careful. That can be way more irritating. Um, and you kind of really have to ease your way into that. So if people are new to retinoids, um, this is definitely a great way to like, you know, get your feet wet with retinoids. And, you know, I say that you can use it as early as your 20s. Yeah, that totally makes sense. It helps mm-hmm. with everything. So not just, you know, prevent aging, but at the same time also helps with texture, pores, and um, and acne, as you were mentioning, so it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's really a lot of benefits into one product. Yeah, and you know, and even though it's like gentle, I always recommend that people, you know, just start slowly. You could start between like one to three days a week. Um, if you're like really, you know, want to be careful, you could start like one to two days a week. Um, but, you know, it's safe to do like every other day. And then after like two weeks, you can continue to work your way up. And if you can tolerate it every day, but if you can't tolerate it every day, it's 
don't worry about it. You know, like if even using a retinol every other day is going to have so many benefits long term. So don't stress if you can't tolerate a retinol daily. Um, but that's one of the biggest things I have to counsel with patients is just to kind of, yeah, ease your way into it. Mm -hmm. I mean, makes sense. Yeah. Start slowly and steady if you're sensitive and then build it up from there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, do we have any Q and A's from? Oh, let's see. Somebody says, what are the benefits? Um, hold on a second. I'm like. Face, the retinal face besides wrinkle prevention. So yes, great question. Um, you know, there is, so retinol, in addition to working deeper in the collagen, it also works on the surface of our skin. One of the main things that retinols do, retinoids in general, is it increases your skin cell turnover. So you're getting rid of like the buildup of old dead skin faster. And what that does is it evens out your skin tone and creates like a brighter complexion. And that's also how it helps with acne. So acne is because dead skin cells and oil clog up your pores. And by increasing that skin cell turnover, you're clearing out your pores faster. And so that's why we like it for acne. Um, and so, so with retinols, it can help decrease the appearance of pores too, because a, a, a enlarged pore is because it's full of content. So we're, we're trying to clear out the contents. Right. Um, Yes, so brightening, evening out skin tone, acne, ankle prevention. Yeah, those are the main things. I mean, what else do you want? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> those are all the things. Those are all the things we want. Um, um, so. I see a question of that's a good question. If I want to have kids in the future, and I'm using retinol. When should I stop? Ah, this is a good question, and there's actually a little bit of controversy in the dermatology world. So definitely with any form of a retinoid, we say don't use it when you're actually pregnant. Um, now, if you're trying to conceive, that's a whole nother topic. Um, if you wanna be safe, I would say recommend, I avoid retinols altogether if you're trying to conceive. Um, yeah. That's just the safest way to do it. Um, some dermatologists say you're safe to use it until you find out that you're pregnant. But um, like I said, I would say I, I usually err on the side of caution and just say, if you're trying to have, trying to have kids, you know, just use a, you know, um, avoid the retinoid, but of course you can still use vitamin C products. You could still use the um, yeah. you know, regular moisturization. You could use gentle exfoliants, um, like the fruit enzymes and then, you know, glycolic acid, alpha hydroxy acids. Um, those are safe, um, you know, when yeah, I, I feel the ma the messages online about pregnancy are very mixed. Uh, I remember my best friend when she was pregnant and she was asking me, and I was like, I should have the know, so let me look online. And there was like all these different websites, all different information was contradicting the other. So then I just ended up having a conference call in my own dorm. I'm like, what should I tell her? I don't know what to do here. It's like, yeah, one says, can you say trace? The next one says you can't. And, that mm -hmm. was like, you can use breath analysis, you can. I'm like, oh my God, it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. There's so many mixed things out there. And the issue is, is that a lot of it hasn't really been studied extensively to right. know, you know, the safety of it. We do, we do know that during pregnancy, so, you know, interesting, I'm sure you've heard of Accutene. Accutene is yeah. a really strong acne medicine. Accutene is actually an oral retinoid. And right. we you know with Accutene that it causes like, major birth defects and so yeah. we kind of translate anything that's like an oral version that causes issues we just say if there's a topical version of it just avoid it yeah so we have like we I mean there's a strong retinoid called tazrec where we have seen issues with pregnancy but we don't really know what happens with these other retinoids so i would say if you see a lot of mixed information out there um just online i would say it's just better to err on the side of caution so if it says it's better to avoid it just just better to avoid it so that you don't have to stress but yes sure. it's very well there's a lot of mixed things even dermatologists don't agree <laughs> what is safe to do when you're trying to get pregnant um so so yeah so my philosophy is just to err on the, side. the safer side i would it yeah yeah i agree yes what yeah. products can i use before retinal face sake um so as retinal face is the last step you can use any products in your routine uh, from the peace out products, um, you can use the serums and moisturizer and then apply mm -hmm. the face stick. Uh, with acne serum, if you have sensitive skin, um, then 
use acting serum during the day, don't use acting serum at night mm -hmm. um, okay. because of the of the, a, the BHA in it. it might mm -hmm. be irritating for some people uh, combining the two. But outside of that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the last step after all your serums and oils and uh, yeah. moisturizer. My routine is so long that I'm like, okay. So it's just the last step. So do my 12 steps first and then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I love about it. It's just simple. You don't even have to think about it. It's like, it's no matter what you're using, you could always just use it at the end. So, I mean, you could still use all, and I like your point. You want to, you don't want to really use, mix it with products that can potentially be irritating, like acne right. products, whether it's like benzoyl peroxide. Benzoyl peroxide can actually inactivate retinoids. So I wouldn't even use it in the same. I didn't know that. Huh. With, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It can inactivate retinoids. So uh, I see definitely don't, avoid, definitely don't use those at the same time, um, but it could also add to irritation too. But there's right. like, there are exfoliating products like salicylic acid, glycolic acid. So it's a little bit controversial as well with that. I would say it's safer to use those at a separate time of the day. Right. They're super gentle and you have, it also depends on your skin type. If your skin type is more oily, if it's not sensitive, it's possible you can use like a low strength version along with the retinol, but everyone's different. So you just have to, you just have to be careful. I, you know, usually just recommend separating the stronger exfoliating agents um, from, from retinols. But worst case, like if somebody like me that likes to test, you can patch this. So mm -hmm. if, you, yes. if you think that you can take it, you don't have sensitive skin, you can put a little bit of acne serum here, mm -hmm. then put face stick. And if you see the next day that this part is a little red, um, then you, you know that your face would have been red. So yes, it's just that's a great idea. Yes. I completely agree. Awesome. Uh, do we got any other questions? What happens when you use too many? I think we answered that one. Uh, I'm trying to look at these questions. What should I avoid while using retinal face stick? I think we covered that one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you should be avoiding when using retinal? Are there any? What was the question? Ingredients that you should be avoiding mixing with retinol are some of the ones that we covered. Yeah. Um, no, we pretty much covered them. Yeah, benzoyl peroxide and like like stronger exfoliating ingredients. Um, you know, whether it is like a stronger strength of alpha hydroxy acids, these include glycolic yeah. acid and lactic acid. And then there's the beta hydroxy acids like salicylic acid. I would be careful. Sometimes some people can mix it, but I would just be careful about mixing those. Um, yeah, those were the main ones. Mm -hmm. Ask, can you, I see, can you use these on neck wrinkles too? Yes, you can. So it's, it's made for, which is a good point. You want to keep the neck young so your face, <laughs> you know, it's always a little weird when you see somebody with a very young face looking and then the neck is really wrinkly. Mm -hmm. Take care of both SPF and retinol on both. Yeah, actually, I I do love that that this person asked this question because it's it's harder. The skin type on our neck is different than our face. We don't really have as many oil glands on our neck, so right. it is more delicate. It's more sensitive. So the retinol that you use on your face um, sometimes may not be tolerable on the neck. But I, this one, I I love that it can be used both areas. Like I find that I don't have any irritation on my neck. I typically react a lot to retinols on my neck. Um, so, so this that's is interesting awesome. because normally what I do use on my face, I use it on my neck. Oh yeah. <laughs> like yeah, I can't no, use copper peptides. So red. Mine oh my so God. I, like copper peptides, I look like a tomato. Oh. So I had a bottle of it and I was like, I'm not gonna like just throw it away. So I just start using it on my neck. I was like, oh, I guess I can take it. If I'm red, I'm not really seeing it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But that was awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we answered them all. Thank you so much for joining us. This was so exciting and so yeah. informative. I learned a couple of things I have no idea about. So that was I'm awesome. I'm glad. No, and I'm a big fan. Um, I think it's super convenient. It's just, I think a lot of people are always looking for like easy way. They're always looking for shortcuts and right. like basic things. Like, what do I need to do? Like, I just want the basics. And I mean, if anybody's looking for a basic skincare routine, this is a lovely, wonderful product that you can add in your night effective easy and effective yes 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 awesome well thank you so much for being with us you were so good. welcome good. yes we'll happy love holidays you. all right we'll take care yes thank happy holidays too. bye, bye.